Hello everyone, Nikki Batgirl D'Angelo here for Star Citizen Addicts Anonymous. Today I'm going to be talking about the Aegis Dynamics Reclaimer, but before I do so, I just want to go over really quickly about what they've changed in concept sales of ships in the future. And this is just their page that they put up last week. In the past, most of us bought ships unseen. I remember not knowing what the M50 was going to look like, but still jumping right on top of it. The same thing with a couple of the other ships. And many of the people that got in first had no idea what anything but the Constellation was going to look like. And the Hornet, of course. Well, here we are, and things are changing because we've got 600,000 backers, and there's going to be ships that are put out from time to time. In fact, this um, concept ship sale is probably going to cover all of the Wave 3 ships, which we'll go over in just a second. We'll see down below. But this is something that's been true for all the sales of ships so far. If you buy early, you get the lowest price. And I just will give you a for instance. I purchased the M50 at 90. Some people purchased it at 85 or 80. And now it's 115. And that was just because we purchased it sight unseen, so we got that with it. The other thing that we got back then was lifetime insurance. Now, this is the most controversial, but what I'm going to tell you is that this is just an in-game discount on the ship. Lifetime insurance does not give you a brand new ship immediately when your ship dies. Just like someone that has standard insurance, you're going to have to wait for the universe to generate the resources that are then picked up and brought to the factory, the ship is built, and then it's delivered to your hangar. You can have the same amount of time to wait for your ship to be delivered after being blown out from underneath you with lifetime insurance than you are with standard insurance. The biggest difference there is it's going to cut down the amount of in-game credits you have to pay monthly, so take away one of the money sinks, and it's going to pretty much, like I said, it's going to reduce the upkeep of that ship. It's not going to change anything for anybody else. So don't get upset about this. It's just for people that want to spend their money up front without seeing the final design. Hangar Flare. The minute that you buy the ship, you will be awarded the poster and the next patch that goes out, if that poster isn't in the game already, the poster will be put in your hangar. So that's pretty cool. So what are the wave ship Wave 3 ship concepts. So sorry about messing that one up. All these ships are huge. The Orion is a mining platform. The 890 Jump has grown to the size of the original Idris, which was a Corvette. Now it's a frigate before it was a Corvette. The Aegis Reclaimer is over 100 meters long. That thing is tremendous. The Carrick is listed at 60, but we haven't seen the updated stats yet. The Misk Whole C is like over 200 meters long, and the Drake Herald is going to be the small one. So, four out of five, or five out of six of these ships one, two, three, four, five, six, six ships wow, five out of these sh six ships are going to be expensive. The Aegis Reclaimer is 350. I would expect the Carrick to be that that price also, but the 890 Jump, RSI Orion, and Misk Hull C, I would expect to be closing in on $1,000 each. The Drake Herald, however, is a very small ship that's very fast and has the ability to keep your data safe while you're moving it from point A to point B. This I expect to be in the $200 price range. Why am I saying all this? Because we're going to jump right into the Reclaimer. Now when we look at what people wanted to see, like myself, everybody wanted to see the Carrick. But the Carrick and the Reclaimer go together. Salvage and exploration are two things that are going to be working hand in hand in many different situations. Let's go jump into the, R the Aegis Dynamics Reclaimer and take a look at why I say that. Well, the first thing is many people think that the Explorer ship is the Indiana Jones ship, and it's not. The Reclaimer is. Salvage, artifact hunting, that's what you'll be doing in this ship. Exploring new star systems, looking for different types of ore and minerals in 
floating asteroids. That's what you're going to be doing aboard a Carrick or an Aquila or a Freelancer Dur or, you know, that, you're getting the point, right? So there's a lot of exploration vessels. But currently, this is the only salvage vessel. And this is the one that you're going to go out artifact hunting in. Now, if you don't want to know what that means, the Freelancer story, the Freelancer, which was Chris Roberts' game from the 90s, it, it focused around an artifact that they found. And it seems like Chris is going to have some kind of a salvage mechanic that's built around finding artifacts and different things and also reclaiming the minerals and resources out of blown up ships. So there's going to be twofold for this ship. So this is something that you're going to want. So let's read a little bit. A dedicated salvage and reclamation platform, the Reclaimer is the perfect ship for venturing into the verse in search of riches and secrets. Whether you're churning debris fields for raw ore or searching for lost artifacts, the Reclaimer is built for utility. The life of a salvager can be tough, but with technology, the reclaimer behind you, with technology like the reclaimer behind you, it can be a profitable way to make your living among the stars. I apologize for that. I'm looking through my microphone to read that. And this is what I'm saying. It's right there, lost artifacts. This is Indiana Jones' ship. Aegis has built the perfect ship for those that want to write their own Star Citizen story. Equipped with massive multi-tool arm, the Reclaimer can grab spaceborne salvage and then carry it aboard for processing. In addition to a large cargo hold, the hull is packed with reclamation equipment capable of processing and storing up to a constellation worth of salvage. It's pretty cool, right? So it's going to take a few of these to take down your 890s. 158 meters long. That is just tremendous, right? That's 450 feet plus, probably 470 feet. A height of 50 meters, a beam of 95 meters. This is wider than a constellation is long. Null cargo mass, 600,000 kilograms. And I think that's four or five times larger than the constellation, which is the largest ship we could see in our hangar today. 2,500 standard cargo units and 20,000 standard cargo units for salvage. And remember, they will allow you to move the salvage bay over to carrying regular cargo if you want to. Five-person crew. Max power plant are two size six, and that's probably to man all the equipment, to power all the equipment, including all the tractor beams and arms and those I guess they'll be like big giant teeth that chew up the metal and turn it back into raw resources. And I would guess there would be a smelter on there to turn it into sheet metal or stuff like that. Who knows? Factory power plant, we won't know for some time. But there are six TR5 engines, and it looks like there's two up front and two in each one of the pods in the back. So that would be four in the back and two in the front. It has eight TR-3 maneuvering engines, and all the regular thrusters are vectored. So this thing is going to be heavy, big, but still maneuverable enough to get around the spaces that it has to, to be able to get its equipment on the things you're trying to salvage or pick through for artifacts. It's got a max shield of six, which is pretty damn big. And then the weapons, which we won't know for some time, are varied, with the turrets being able to handle either weapons or extra tractor beams, and the Class 9 ports being these point defense weapons, which I would expect to be like the U.S. Navy and British and French Sea Whiz mounts, which are 20 and 25 millimeter Gatling guns that have a high rate of fire and throw a lot of metal at a target. Let me tell you, when those things go off, it sounds like a very loud zipper being pulled. So it talks about additional equipment. These things have drones, unmanned drones that will go out and pull things towards the reclaimer so the reclaimer could start the process of salvaging whatever is in front of it. And of course, we get the cargo disclaimer, which is in the future, things will be different. We expect the numbers to 
um, be bigger for some of the ships. And over here, they're telling us that they want the Banu Merchantman, the Hull Sea, and the Starfarer to have more pure, pure cargo space than the Reclaimer, followed by the Caterpillar and Freelancer Max, which is, those are all cargo ships, but the Constellation Taurus and the Constellation have far more than the Freelancer Max. And I think the Caterpillar is only limited by the number of pieces you could stick together for it to carry. All right, so we got that, right? Here's the hard points, and here's the hollow viewer. So let's look at the hollow viewer. And, of course, this thing, wow, just empty space inside of it. I can't wait to get my hands on one. I have purchased one. So let's go over to the page where you buy one. All right, this is one of the more expensive ships currently for sale. Well, it actually probably is the most expensive ship currently for sale. Most of the ships are below this cost. I think the Aquila, Aquila package costs this much. But here you see what you're getting with it. The reclaimer, a poster, the model, the insurance, and you're getting the VFG industrial hangar. That leads to believe that you can actually put this thing in the VFG hangar. I'm not entirely sure about that. So that's my preview on the Reclaimer. I don't know what else to tell you about it, except for the points that I've made about the difference between exploration and salvage. If you envision yourself being the Indiana Jones of this universe, this is the ship that you're going to want. This is going to be the artifact hunter's ship. The person that finds a blown up planet or goes onto a planet that was undiscovered and just starts salvaging through the different places that you could land on those planets. Now that's way, 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 way off in the future as we won't have procedurally generated planets for some time after the game actually goes live. So we're looking at 2017 for something like that. So I'm very happy with the design. I think it's very um, butch looking. It's a very brute looking ship and has that industrial look and feel to it. I think they captured what a salvage vessel should look like and it still holds on to that Aegis Dynamics design, which I'm pretty happy with. And with that said, I guess I don't have anything else for you. So you all be safe out there, and I'll talk to you soon.